Uh, next image, please. This is Golden Horde, and this is, uh, um, again, plastic stuff. And it's basically an alien invasion of Obia babies. Uh, next image, please. So, it, it, or, or, or these are float, um, sp alien spaceships slash boats made out of plastic stuff, plastic bits and pieces, plastic toys, all screwed down onto wood. And, um, and uh, that's it, basically. Uh, I have a lot of stuff I can say about it, but let's, let's keep going on. Okay, and this is coming close to the end, I think. Um, I had a commission um, a year and a half ago, right? To do something for a, a, for this something called the Folkestone Triennial, which is a very new but very important exhibition in the south of England, and this is what I came up with. And the piece is called "For Those in Peril on the Sea." And again, you come from a place, Guyana, land of many waters, and all that, so you're very conscious of this. Growing up here, you're very conscious of what the sea can do. And so, what these are are model boats. Some of them I bought and then customized heavily. Some of them are made. And then they're all suspended in this church. In throughout Europe, in certain European places, maybe certain parts of Latin America, if you go to sea and you survive your journey, they will be, they could be uh you donate a boat, right? And it would hang in the church, thank you for saving me and stuff like that, you know? So that so this is a contemporary version of that. So it's all that that thing that the red shape there. Next image please. Uh, so this is an uh, oil tanker, and again, back to the whole uh, political thing, this is, it's named after one of the big oil tankers seized by Somali pirates, um, because that's obviously become a, a big issue in shipping. And everything, ha it's a global piece. One boat is called MV Kaichur, for, for obvious reasons. Um, it's, it's way back here somewhere or the other. And, yeah... And there's boats from all over the place. There's 76 of them. And it became a quite a, a local phenomenon where people going in and the, the, all, all the women who were doing flowers in the church started making little boats and stuff like that. It was, it was quite a special thing. If you go to Miami in, in a year's time, in, in eight, nine months' time, you'll see it in Miami Museum because amazingly they bought it. Which, biggest break I've ever had in my life. Okay, next image, please. That's another image of the piece. When I was working on this piece, three weeks into working on it, Indra phones up. She's looking after her mother at the time. She phones up. Hugh, Hugh, turn on the television. Something terrible has happened in Japan. I'm like, what? What do you mean? I turn on the television, and that I saw, and that this is the tsunami. And I'm like, whoa. And that shocked me. And I came to the studio, and these boats, like this, hanging away, were scattered on the floor, and it looked just like that. And so this piece here is a raft, sort of commemorating that. So all these things are commemorations, not sort of, um, it's a secular thing, but um, one woman said it, which I quite liked, she was um, uh, Muslim, and she's saying, you know what, I could see this in a mosque. And for me, that was when the piece felt successful. It tra it's a, something to transcend any religious setting, you know. Next image, please. Oh, thank goodness for that. Right, that's it. <laughs> If you have any energy and you want to ask questions, please do. I will attempt to answer. Don't be shy, as they say, you know. Silence. Anna, I know when you were doing the one with the dolls and so on, we talked a lot about the garbage. And <laughs> there's a lot of things. Are you ever um, motivated to do anything home of, of this kind of scale? Um, and do you wish to do something at home? Uh, this is going to be a back and forth thing, so I'm talking about um, The garbage, oh Lord. That's quite a shock when I came back in 2005, and it's even more of a shock now. So as, I, as I've been doing the same thing, I've been walking around thinking, well, do you recycle it? And I, was, I, I walk around today even thinking, well, if you, ask, if you clean the bottles out and you strap them together and, 
and I, I'm still working it in my head, you know, to me as to what one would do. No, I'm always interested in that. You know what I mean? I mean, for me, this is the source of my inspiration, basically. So um, I sound like I'm avoiding the issue, <laughs> avoiding it, but um, uh, yes, I think there is something in that. I mean, put it this way: if everybody in this country made a piece of art out of the bottles and the, uh, and, it, and they started making money for people, right? Then they won't have a garbage problem in, 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 in the country at all, you know. Right. Um, something with Guyanese architecture, to be honest. De definitely something with that. I mean, um, off the top of my head, some sort of reconstruction or some artwork reconstruction of one of these houses which had just been abandoned, turning it into an art object rather than just, you know. You know? I mean, I, we could, I could start tomorrow, you know, There's a, but, but, but definitely something along those lines, I think, to me, sounds like an interesting thing, if not for me, for anybody else to do, you know what I mean? At St. John's College, you know, we are part of the Mashamani competition, and so we have a calypso and garbage. You know, I, I, I just when you said that, I thought, you know, I, I suddenly thought, you know what, you need, you, they need to have a garbage float, you know what I mean, a float basically made up of garbage. Obviously, you need to clean it up, because you don't want to kill nobody. But seriously, man, everybody would talk about that for years to come, you know. That, that's, that's the way to deal with the situation. In fact, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 I, I'm, I'm, I'm very serious. I mean, um, you have all the fancy colors and stuff like that, and a whole load of garbage come past. People are going to be talking with the fancy because they're going to be talking with the garbage, you know. What's your view of the changing landscape in Georgetown now? You're seeing this. Um, I want to be able to come back here, so I, I can't. I, I'm not going to get into no war, but <laughs> war about this, right? But I have to say that I, I think there are different ways of looking at it, right? I found that I love these old buildings, and I really do love them, but also some of these new insane things, I just think it's a bit like somebody thinking, you know what, I wake up one day, I got enough money in my bank, I can build a palace, man, that's what I want, you know what I mean? And I just think, I just find there's something quite fabulous about that, you know? I mean, there's some houses I've seen here, particular one in Queenstown with a massive balcony coming down and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's... I mean, you know, some people would say this is a monstrosity. For me, it's fascinating because personally, I've, I've been heavily inspired by Baroque art. And what I'm seeing in Guyana is a concrete Baroque. And it's gone extreme to the point whereby you, you ain't got no... Back in the day, it was decorative enough to have some iron bars, right, as a, rail, as a, gr as a grill, and a few circles, a few decorative. Now it's gone, like, insane, you know. And I just think there's something which... I think you're missing a trick if you, you write it off. No, you need both. That's the thing, you know. You see, here's how I, here's how I step the question. You know, I mean, you keep everybody happy. I like I like the new stuff and I like the old stuff, <laughs> you know. And um, which one I like better is debatable. You know, I was in the Walter Ross Museum earlier today, and standing upstairs on the first floor in the in the um, there's a veranda area, and looking out through that particular point, I think oh, this is. This is beautiful. This, 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 this piece of architecture is flawless. There ain't nothing wrong with it. You know? Some of the new buildings, there's stuff wrong with them. But then when it becomes so excessive that you throw everything at it, what starts off as being wrong starts to becoming right within its own context of, of, of madness. You know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. My opinion is an opinion. Is, I'm a tourist, so my opinion is a bit different. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, look, man, look. Here's my 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 thing is um, you don't bore your audience. <laughs> you know, you know, you you you, you key. Yeah, okay. But 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 this this for me is what 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 a painting should be like. What 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 painting? How it should work? Whereby you look at something and tomorrow morning you think, you know what? Um, I still like it. In a year's time, you know, I, oh, I didn't notice that piece. You know what I mean? Yeah. Five, ten years time, you think, you know what? It's not rubbish. You know what I mean? Um, of course, sadly, in ten years time, sometimes you look at something and you think, well, 
Yeah, well, uh, it wasn't that good after all. You know? <laughs> I don't want to engage on the debate, and you're being provocative and very cerebral, which is wonderful. But there was one time I used to call the, the monstrosities Georgetown Gothic awful, but you are right, it's now Baroque. Yeah. But, but it's, it's, the, the issues are far too painful and far too huge, and far too about the dysfunction of after Savannah society for us to say that it's completely wonderful. However, let me just say thank you for the wonderful work. Thank you for starting with those beautiful drawings, which I've never seen before. Reminding me of your mom, but the character is different because it's so sinewy and so strong and so vibrant. No, you can't. No, no, no. Let's keep it safe to add to what you're saying. Not, not to interrupt, not to criticize. No, 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 no. Because, because what, 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 what those drawings you talk about my mother, those drawings were done in 1992, just before she died. And that was, this, this is the last work I discussed with her. And so, obviously, it's become the most personal to me. But um, and what I what I, I sat down with her and discussed with her and realized that all oh, right she's more accurate than me but at least I got the life going in my drawings you know not that she didn't have but to me but 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 it's but it was anyway but, but what was interesting as well is that we found that we drew the same buildings without realizing that and that was yeah 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 yeah. She did a lot of drawings of um, these wonderful colonial wooden buildings. And then those two that I found, I got recently, this very simple line drawing. Yeah. Where she, where she did a mosque, and you were there doing a, a yeah. temple. And, and, and I just want to emphasize, in a boring way, that even though you have an artist who is uh, dealing, obviously, and has evolved into a very strong conceptual artist, there is that basis of his work, which is technical, which is practical, which is about drawing, which is about making things. Did you put all the beads on yourself, or somebody was helping you? All the things I do, um, generally speaking, mm -hmm. it, all the things I do are things which I can do myself. But, but yes, but it, 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 it's um, the scale and the scope. I think you just yeah, need people yeah, to I help you execute it. Yeah. Uh, and I just wanted to say that uh, you just touched on all the complexities of British life now, and all the, all the, the agonies that British have about their past, and all of those things. I think you tapped into it, the, all those images of the Queen and, and so on. Um, it's a hugely complex subject, so you had a lot of echoes of ideas in your work, and I think it's very important for us to understand that when you have a conceptual artist, it's important to be, for the artist to be able to trace, not all the time, but to see how that person has developed. Um, and you could see in the images that he showed you how he moved from the slightly less complicated to the more Baroque and the more grand uh, and th there is a there is a development, and it comes from a kind of integrity of thinking. And I don't think you can really create conceptual art, even at this point in time, without that basis of very deep thought, an integrity of approach. And as I said just now, you have to have those skills that will make you able to express and and build the most complex of ideas. And you have to do it. Skill. You have to be able to draw, you have to be able to build, you have to be able to sculpt. And I think that is also the lesson that artists have to go away with, that you need to keep pushing yourself, technically speaking, believe me. The ideas nobody can tell you about, nobody can give you, nobody can steal your ideas, believe me. But technically speaking, you have to be able to express yourself. And I think this is just a wonderful feast, and I thank you very much for being willing to share with us and for my hostel pouncing on you and, and persuading you to come this afternoon. It's very, it was very inspiring and enjoyable. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's finish that. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank